we're going to do a little review now of connective tissue. Uh, I'm going to show you some slides that we took uh, in class yesterday during our review, so those that weren't there at the review can go through them. Now remember the difference between connective tissue and epithelial tissue. Two big things. Epithelial tissue. Remember your CRAP, C-R-A-P. Cellularity, rapid regeneration. They're avascular, avascular tissue, and there's a polarity, a top side and a bottom side. Now with connective tissue, connective tissue is vascular. There's an exception with our cartilage, but for the most part, connective tissue is a vascular tissue. And instead of being cellularity, where the cells are close together, for the most part, connective tissue, the cells are far apart. When you're going through looking at these slides, I want you to always kind of keep in mind your lecture notes. Here's just a, a page of your lecture notes. Read through them. Make sure you understand it while you're looking at, this, at the connective tissue slides. Remember, it is the matrix that is so important in connective tissue because since the cells are so far apart, it is that matrix, that extracellular area between the cells that is so important. In the matrix, you have your ground substance. We said your ground substance could be watery, liquidy, like it we found in blood, like you find in blood. It could be serpy, gel-like, that would be the connect, loose um, connective tissue proper. We did that in, in class. We poured some K-Rho SERP, remember? That is the, the, the ground substance. R can be firm. We made some auger plates that was to represent the, the um, ground substance of our cartilage. Or it could be hard, hard like in bone. Now, we won't be doing bone um, during this first exam. We'll be doing that in our next session when we get to the skeletal system. And we won't be doing blood connective tissue. We'll get to that when we do our cardiovascular system. So basically, we are concentrating on ground substance that is either serpy, our connective tissue proper, or firm, our cartilage connective tissue. So always keep those in mind. What is the ground substance of the material, of the tissue that you are looking at? That is, that is what you're going to start with. Then we will add our protein fibers into the ground substance. And remember, it is those protein fibers and ground substance together that make that matrix. That matrix is not alive. Remember, it is not alive, okay? So make sure you read through your lecture notes and you understand all this stuff before you even start looking at these slides. So let's get started on our slides and see how you do. So let's just pop some up, see what comes up. So, let's get this a little bit bigger. These are in no order, so we'll just go through them. First thing you look at, here is the, the pointer. The pointer is pointing in this area, so we are going to be concentrating on this area. First thing you should notice is these white things. These are lacunae. Lacunae is plural, singular. If it's just one, it's a lacuna. Remember, lacuna. In the lacunas, the lacunas, excuse me, are going to be our cells that make this matrix. These are the chondrocytes that are in here. The chondro, remember, chondro means cartilage. So as soon as you see a lacuna, all these lacunae, you know this is some type of cartilage. Look in the matrix. The matrix here, you can see it, it's, it's got some of these 
dark fibers in the matrix. So this is going to be elastic cartilage. Elastic cartilage. Remember, it's two names, elastic and cartilage. If I ask you what kind of connective tissue this is and you put elastic, that is wrong. This is elastic cartilage filled with elastic fibers, protein fibers. Here's going to be the perichondrium around here. Remember, peri means around, chondrium, we're talking about cartilage. Because the cartilage itself is avascular, it has no blood flow through it. So it's going to be getting its nutrients and blood supply from the perichondrium up and through here. Remember, it's avascular, slow to heal. You damage cartilage, slow to heal. Well, let's see if we can see this one a little bit better. So here we just see a bunch of cells um, and we see these black branching fibers, these black branching fibers. And the matrix is going to be all this white stuff here. So this is going to be classified as connective tissue proper, meaning the, the ground substance is going to be that serpy material. And it's loose. The protein fibers are loosely arranged. So this is reticular fibers. These are all reticular fibers. Remember, you need a special stain to see these reticular fibers. And reticular um, connective tissue, that is going to be supporting our soft organs. So soft organs like the spleen or the liver, they're going to kind of be held together by these reticular fibers. All these cells in the background, not all of them, but most of them are from this, the, the organ that these reticular fibers are actually holding or are in, are located in. So this is reticular connective tissue, a loose connective tissue. Here is another loose connective tissue proper, classic for a real or connective tissue. This is the pickup sticks pattern I was talking to you about in class. Most of these cells here are the nuclei of fibroblasts. Fibroblasts are making the protein fibers of this um, connective tissue. These bigger ones here, these are collagen. The, the thinner ones that look like little hair like hair hair really thin, um, those, those are elastic fibers. This also has reticular fibers, but you do not see them because you need a special stain. But this is a realer connective tissue. Fibroblasts make all three protein fibers in equal numbers. Remember, the realer connective tissue also um, holds some phagocytes in here. And we were going to find a realer connective tissue under all our epithelial tissue. Now this, I have some better pictures of this too, but this is dense irregular connective tissue. You saw this in the dermis um, of of the skin that we just went over uh, in class um, yes, Thursday. So this is dense irregular connective tissue. These are all collagen fibers. They're arranged in all different ways. Um, not like dense regular where the collagen fibers are in a parallel pattern. These collagen fibers are in all different, they're running in all different directions. So it gives it strength. So this is dense irregular connective tissue found in the dermis, in the reticular layer of our dermis.
This is just a close-up of the dense irregular connective tissue. Now let's see if we can get a little closer. Um, this one's hard to see just because this this is dense regular connective tissue. You can see the fibroblasts are squished in through here so they're flattened, not much space, because this is this is all collagen running through here. So this is dense regular connective tissue. Remember, dense regular and dense irregular connective tissue are still connective tissue proper because their ground substance is still that serpy kind of material and it they are called dense connective tissue proper because there is lots of protein fibers in their matrix. So that is the difference between dense connective tissue proper, lots of protein fibers in the matrix versus loose connective tissue proper which has loosely arranged protein fibers in their matrix. So here we see some lacunae. And this is pointed right into a lacuna. And here is the nuclei of the chondrocyte. Look at this matrix. Do you see anything in the matrix? It's haze. It's just hazy. It's, it's like glass-like. This is hyaline cartilage. Remember, elastic cartilage had all those dark staining elastic fibers. Hyaline cartilage, our most common cartilage. Hyaline. Speaking of elastic cartilage, here we are again. Elastic cartilage. This one really has lots of dark stained elastic fibers in here. The pointers at a chondrocyte in its lacuna here. This is elastic cartilage. Where do you find elastic cartilage? Two, pla two big places that both starts with E. The epiglottis. This is actually from the epiglottis. And the external ear. The external ear. Elastic cartilage. And if you look at this down here, what do you see? You see adipose tissue down here, don't you? So remember, all these slides, they're going to have mul multiple tissue types on one slide. Do, 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 do. So here we have, this was skin, right? So here is our epidermis. The oops. The epidermis is made up of what kind of tissue? This is epithelial tissue, right? This is stratified squamous keratinized. Remember, these are all keratinized. This is dead up here. No nuclei up here. This is dead. All these um, keratinocytes are now filled with the protein keratin and the cells have died. So this is our epidermis. Below the epidermis is the dermis. And here we have the reticular layer of the dermis. So once again, what kind of connective tissue is in the reticular layer of the dermis? Dense, irregular dense irregular connective tissue. This is going to be the papillary region of the dermis. Remember papilla means little nipple. Got all these little nipples in here. The papillary region is a real or connective tissue. What kind of connective, um, what kind of tissue is underneath all epithelial tissue? A real or connective tissue. This is a little fuzzy. Um, uh, once again, 
This is going to be dense regular connective tissue. You see the flattened nuclei of the fibroblasts in here. This matrix is filled with collagen fibers. Dense regular, those collagen fibers are running parallel to each other in one direction. Remember, dense regular connective tissue is a connective tissue proper and it is found in tendons and ligaments. Tendons and ligaments. Uh, this one, once again, what is this? A realer connective tissue. A realer connective tissue. Adipose. Now, adipose, some of you will get this confused with simple squamous, especially of the lungs, but it's not. Here is a, a space where fat used to be stored. All these are fat storing spaces, and the nuclei are pushed out to the side. So you just see one nucleus here, one nucleus here, one here. But there, this is just the rim of the, the adipose site and you have a, one nucleus in there. So this is just adipose tissue. This is a loose, it's classified as it's connective tissue proper, loose connective tissue. Very vascular. This is a vascular tissue. So once again you see a lacuna with a, the nuclei stain this bright pink. So this is a chondrocyte. But look at that matrix. It is filled with collagen fibers. So this, you know it's a cartilage. You got the lacuna here. Um, you know it's a cartilage. So this is fibrocartilage, one word. Fibrocartilage, one word. It's the strongest cartilage. This is this cartilage is um, able to withstand compressive forces. You're going to find this in the intervertebral discs, the cartilage in between your vertebrae. The pubic symphysis is holding the two pubic bones together, and the menisci in the knee. So fibrocartilage, very strong cartilage. Once again, what is this? Adipose. These are adipose sites. Adipose tissue. A loose connective tissue. Loose connective tissue. Another one, uh, another loose connective tissue. Loose connective tissue proper, yes. Loose because these protein fibers are loosely arranged in the matrix. You've got some collagen fibers, the strong cord-like collagen fibers, the elastic fibers, these thin ones. They're like elastic rubber bands. They stretch and recoil. Cannot see the reticular fibers here. They're there, but you cannot see them because you need a special stain. All these are the fibroblasts. A realer connective tissue. Here's another. What is this? We've got our epidermis here. Here's our epidermis, stratified squamous, keratinized. Here's our reticular layer of the skin. The reticular layer of, of the skin. This is the dermis. In the reticular layer of the dermis, we have dense irregular. You can actually see some adipose tissue down here, right? It's kind of coming into view so you know this is where the hypodermis or the sub Q layer is going to start where the fat shows up. Again, dense regular connective tissue. The collagen is arranged in parallel patterns. 
Here's the squashed fibroblasts. Where do you find it? Tendons and ligaments. This is a dense connective tissue proper. Another example of dense, regular connective tissue. Fibroblasts are squashed. The matrix is filled with the collagen protein fibers. Where do you find it? Tendons and ligaments. Dense, regular connective tissue. Remember, this is a connective tissue proper. Its matrix is serpy. Don't confuse this. For some reason, some students confuse this with cartilage. I'm not sure why, but don't. Here we go again. What is this? What are all these white things called? Those are the lacunae with their chondrocytes. Here's the matrix with the elastic fibers. Here's the perichondrium. It's where the avascular cartilage is going to be getting its nutrients. This is elastic cartilage. Where do you find it? Epiglottis, external ear. You got the E, E, E. Elastic cartilage, epiglottis, external ear. Here's some more adipose down here. Adipose tissue. Beautiful. Isn't that beautiful? So what do you see? What are these white things? Lacunae. Inside them are the, you can see them, the chondrocytes. The chondrocytes are making the matrix. They're filling it up with all collagen, very densely packed collagen. What kind of connective tissue is this? Well, we know it's cartilage. What kind of cartilage? This is fibrocartilage, fibrocartilage. Where do you find it? intervertebral discs, the pubic symphysis, that cartilage pad that, that holds, connects the two hip bones together, the menisci of the knee, fibrocartilage, one word, fibrocartilage, one word. There we go, another, what are you seeing? You're seeing a lacuna, 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 lacuna. This is cartilage. Look at the matrix. What's in the matrix? Don't see anything. It's just hazy. Beautiful. This is hyaline cartilage, hyaline cartilage. Here's the perichondrium up and through here. And if you can kind of see on the top here, you can see cilia up here. I don't know if you can, but this is going to be pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium. So here's cilia. So we are in the airway here. This is the, actually a slide from the trachea. So this is hyaline cartilage. Two words, hyaline cartilage. If I ask you what kind of um, connective tissue this is and you put down hyaline, that's wrong. You need to say hyaline cartilage. I think the some of these are here's another What are you seeing? This is our reticular fibers again. This is a loose connective tissue proper. So these are reticular fibers. You're going to find reticular fibers in soft organs like the liver and the spleen. So these, all these cells back in here are most likely all from the, the soft organ that these reticular fibers are in. So reticular connective tissue, a uh, connected, loose connective tissue. I think we went through all of them. So we have our three 
We have our loose connective tissue proper. We have our loose connective tissue proper. The three that you need to know are areolar connective tissue, reticular connective tissue, and adipose, adipose tissue. And then you have your dense connective tissue proper, dense regular and dense irregular. Then you have your firm connective tissue, which is your cartilage. You have your three types of cartilage, hyaline, elastic, and fibrocartilage. Hyaline cartilage, elastic cartilage, and fibrocartilage. Since we have some more cells here, these are what we had um, yesterday at the review. We'll just go through them. So you guys that weren't at the, the review, you can go through them again. So what is this? The pointer is at what? What kind of tissue are you looking at? This is a flat or whole mount slide of a tissue. This is mesothelium. Mesothelium, you see the individual cells here. Mesothelium is a simple squamous. Uh, this is from a serous membrane. Remember, mesothelium. It's a simple squamous epithelium. Beautiful picture here. Beautiful. Here is the, the pointers and the lumen. Here is your basement membrane. What do you see here? It looks stratified, but it's not. You can see, it gets a little blurry when we go higher, but you can kind of see the nuclei are elongated. But what do you see on the top here, on the apical region of these cells? You see cilia. So this is going to be pseudo, meaning it's not really, it's falsely stratified, pseudostratified, ciliated, columnar epithelium. And down in here, you can actually see some blood vessels. Look at those nuclei. Remember what kind of um, epithelium lines are blood vessels? Simple squamous. So you can kind of see the simple squamous lining our blood vessels. And the special type of simple squamous, what do we call it that lines our blood vessels? Endothelium. Endothelium. Oh, we just did that one. That's our reticular connective tissue. Pointer in the lumen. Here is the basement membrane somewhere down here. This is going to be connective tissue. So can you tell just from this magnification what this is? It looks like it's one layer thick, so it's simple. The nuclei are elongated, so it's columnar. You can kind of see a hazy border up here. So that's going to be your microvilli. Then you have all these white blobs in here. That's your goblet cells releasing mucus. There's a lot of mucus in, in here. So let's see if we can go higher, Mag. It kind of gets blurry there, but this is simple columnar microvilli, and here is your goblet cells. Your basement membrane would be somewhere around here, going all the way around. So these are all simple columnar goblet cells, microvilli. Here's another one. Here's going to be the pointer in the lumen. The basement membrane will be somewhere down here. This is going to be connective tissue down here. This one's nice. Look at the nuclei here. Elongated nuclei, so you know it's columnar, right? What are these white things? These are goblets, goblet cells. So, and you kind of see the fuzzy border up here too. Let's see if we can go higher here. You can see a fuzzy border up here. So once again, this is simple columnar microvilli up here with goblet cells. Remember, what's the function of microvilli? 
There's cytoplasmic extensions that increase the surface area of the cell for absorption. Easy wheezy, pointer in the lumen. Here's your epithelial tissue. Nice round nuclei. Simple cuboidal, lots of simple cuboidal throughout this slide. Here is the lumen, the pointers basically pointing at the epithelial tissue right here. When you see this, you know you are in the kidney. When we get to the kidney, you will know what this whole structure is. So this is simple squamous. See the flattened nuclei going all the way around. Simple squamous. Here's the lumen, this white thing right here, lumen. And then these are all what? Simple cuboidal, simple cuboidal. When you see this, what organ is this from? This is the lung. Nothing else looks like this. All these are little alveoli. This is where gas exchange is taking place. This is all simple squamous, all simple squamous. I think it gets a little blurry when I go high on that on that one. Let's see if this one's any better. Yeah, this is a little bit better. So again, this is from the lung. These are alveoli where gas exchange takes place. This is all going to be simple squamous, simple squamous. Do a little skin here. Here is basically free space up here, right? This is the air. This is going to be um, your epidermis. This is your epidermis. What kind of epithelium is this? It's stratified, stratified, definitely more than one layer thick, stratified squamous, keratinized. Remember this top layer, this is all dead. No nuclei up here, keratinized. These are dead keratinocytes. Their cytoplasm has been filled with the protein keratin. This bottom layer is the stratum what? Bottom layer, stratum basali. Then you have this big layer here, stratum spinosum. Stratum basali. Those keratinocytes are rapidly dividing, setting their daughter cells up in the, to the stratum spinosum. Then you see this darkened area here. See if we can go higher when you get to this darkened area, you're going to see granules in here. These keratinocytes have started making keratin, and that's what you're seeing. Those granules that are giving it that dark color up here, that means that is, that is the keratin that's being formed in those keratinocytes. And eventually the keratin fills up the cytoplasm. There's no room for any of this, the organ, organelles of the cell. So the cell dies. There's stratum lucidum, stratum corneum. This is obviously from thick skin. The only place um, you will find stratum lucidum is where? The palms of your hands and the bottom of your feet. Otherwise, you only have stratum basale, stratum spinosum, stratum granulosum, and stratum corneum. You only have stratum lucidum in the palms of your hands or the bottom of your feet in thick skin. Remember that. Another skin slide. Once again, your 
epidermis, what kind of epithelium? Stratified squamous keratinized stratum basale, stratum, granu uh, stratum spinosum, stratum granulosum, stratum lucidum here, stratum corneum. So once again, this is from thick skin. Now here you have what kind of epithelium? Here's the pointer in the lumen. It's stratified. The top cells are kind of squished. But do you see nuclei up in here? Yes. So has this been keratinized? No. Remember, if it was keratinized, the top layers are dead. They're filled with keratin. These cells are alive. So this is stratified squamous non-keratinized. This is most, I think this is from the esophagus, areas of wear and tear. Here is another stratified squamous non-keratinized. Why is it non-keratinized? Do you see nuclei up here? Yes. These cells are alive. These cells are squashed, stratified, squamous, non-keratinized, found in areas of wear and tear. Here we go again. Stratified squamous, keratinized, stratum basale, stratum spinosum, stratum granulosum, stratum lucidum, stratum corneum. The cells are alive, obviously, in stratum basale. Those keratinocytes are actively dividing rapidly. Stratum spinosum, the cells are still alive. Stratum granulosum, they start dying. They're starting to die as their cytoplasm fills up with the protein keratin. Lucidum and corneum, those stratum layers are dead. Those cells are dead, 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 dead. Pointer in lumen. Here, your basement membrane is going to be somewhere down here. Oop, down here. It's stratified, but look at those apical cells. Weird looking cells. What looks like this? Transitional epithelium. Found in the ureters, the ureters take formed urine from the kidney to the bladder, and it's found in the bladder. Remember, this lumen is where urine is being collected and held and has these transitional, as you get more urine, these, these apical cells are going to transition from these balloon-like, dome-like cells to flattened cells. So this is transitional epithelium. Same thing, another transitional epithelium. Look at the apical cells. These are not flattened. These are not flattened. This is transitional. So I think we went through all of them. Um, I hope that helps you in your review. Make sure you go through the PowerPoint, your lecture notes. Understand the properties of these tissues. And we'll... See you on Tuesday for your first exam.